Hi, welcome to the LGBTQ review with me, James, and this is Beth. We showcase and review LGBTQIA plus content, and this time we're looking at before Stonewall, the making of a gay and lesbian community. We can debate uh, uh, what is an illness uh, or whether it is an illness or not. I happen to subscribe to the belief that it is a tragic illness. Don't you want uh, the night of the Stonewall riots came along. Just everything came together at that one moment. They decided, you know, we've had enough of this kind of thing. We're going to fight back. We got together because we weren't going to put up with being pushed around. What? When I come out, we didn't have the word gay. The word for us is temperamental. The feeling that was created was you could walk down the street and one out of 10 or one out of 20 or whatever it might be, might be having those feelings. And that next night, I was in a room with 12 other lesbians for the first time in my life, and oh, what a thrill that was. So Before Stonewall, The Making of a Gay and Lesbian Community is a 1984 documentary, American documentary, about the lesbian and gay community in the US before the Stonewall riots. Narrated by Ruby Mae Brown, the feminist writer, best known for her autobiographical coming of age novel, Ruby Fruit Jungle. Directed by Greta Schiller, it premiered at the 1984 Toronto Film Festival, went on to win the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival and numerous other awards, including Emmys, etc. In 1999, a companion piece was made called After Stonewall. There's another one as well. I, I read um, Before Homosexuals, I think it's called, and it's like a prequel to Before Stonewall. The film was re-released for the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots. It's been remastered. 2019, it was introduced into the Library of Congress National Film Registry for its importance in cultural um, history. This is so good. It's like unbelievable that it's just not taught in or like shown in schools and stuff because it's such an important piece of film. It is very good. It's like a who's who of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. lesbian and gay movement in the US. I really like the talking head elements mm -hmm. of the film. Like there's so many and they're so diverse. It make, like it builds to a really engaging and interesting film. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, at the beginning I struggled with it. I think up until when they talk about World War II, because I don't really like this kind of documentary filmmaking where it's like, lots of archival stuff and then like a bit of talking head. I just find it usually like very unengaging and like kind of um, cold. But yeah, this was like, I don't know. It just was really great. I, I was reading an um, Atlantic article about it and the filmmakers were saying how hard it was to get any archival stuff. The further back you go, the harder it is. And obviously like, like searching for keywords like gay or lesbian is just like impossible and it's just not mentioned and stuff so it's so hard to get all the information which I think is why the beginning is because they kind of just go in chronological order is it's harder to really you know get any bearing on what was going on yeah when you condense all this history down into like an hour and a half I think the interesting thing to see that emerges for me is how important organizing has been so when they talk about like meeting up during the war and realizing there's all these other people around the country and then you know creating these publications for the first time that's like where it starts to you know stuff gets changed and how much the government is like trying to just get rid of any mention or any organizing is like so blatant when you when it's like framed like this and there's lots of stuff in it that like i've learned at like uni or school and stuff which is like the gay activism is just completely cut out of it like the mccarthyism stuff which learns at, at, at film school and stuff. Never talked about the gay aspect to it. I imagine that the syllabus here would have been set during section 28, so they wouldn't have been able to speak about it. And then to change everything after that would have been, I mean, completely doable, but you, you know. Stuff about um, like gay activists getting involved in the civil rights movement with like Martin Luther King and stuff, I've, I'd never heard of before either. And it's just like fascinating and it's like oh yeah okay this makes sense and like you understand how all these things start to work and things but yeah mm -hmm. yeah i thought it was really interesting when andre lord was saying about the civil rights movement being a blueprint for all the movements going 
forward and how it sort of sparked everything. Well, why can't they make documentaries like this now? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like with everybody in them. Yeah, I, was, I, I haven't written it down because there's just so many people, but there's so much in it and there's so many stories and there's so many things to talk about. It's just like information overload sometimes. There's like parts you kind of wish you could just like delve into, like a little rabbit hole. Like the story about Eisenhower going to the all-female regiment and that conversation that they have in the film. That's like mm. so interesting. And there's lots of bits like that throughout the film. You're like, oh, I wish I could just pause this and just delve into that, you know. But and it just skips along. And that's kind of like frustrating sometimes because it's just so interesting. And these people were just like so fascinating. I can mention those first publications that they talk about briefly. Uh, the first mm. game magazine one, mm. very important. And then the, the ladder was the lesbian one as well. Being like the first of anything is just wild. So I can't imagine what that must have been like to have, to see that on like, a sh I don't know how they um, distributed it, but for that to be on shelves and stuff and be passed around must have been pretty incredible. Mm. Like a landmark. I wonder how they know that they're the first in a country yeah, that's that's well. But it all just fits into how important organizing is. Yeah. And how that like, you can see the progression of it throughout the film. And the more it happens, the more like visibility and like more, it, it all goes also with obviously like times change and stuff and it gets easier, but it's just like a continual struggle of it. We've watched the Marsha P. Johnson documentary and yeah. several other documentaries and they're all doing the same. Like I know that this one starts earlier, but they're all doing the same before Stonewall like time period. And this one doesn't mention trans people at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe the companion piece goes back and like puts in the, well, like trans people and the chunks of history that they missed. I mean, also maybe it doesn't, I haven't seen it, but fingers crossed. It's interesting to see when like government enforces, for instance, the executive order which is like if you're found out to be gay you'll be kicked out of office essentially i know that that has happened and i know all that but still when people are talking about it and you see it, the order itself and stuff and like the footage it's so like heinous and hideous it's just like oh my god i will rate it 4.8 thousand volumes of lesbian pulp fiction i'll rate it 4.7 topless army men doing star jumps in a field. So that's what we thought. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And you can li like and subscribe. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at LGBTQ underscore review.